Happy Tuesday. Happy So What Day. I hope you're having a great start to your week. Um, I was just about to add something to the screen here because today is our last day for this amazing sale. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can all see it. We have special coupons you can use at sulky.com. The more you spend, the more you can save. And again, today is the last day to use these coupon codes. So be sure to write them down because you might want to grab up some stuff today while I'm talking about it. And you can use these great coupons for amazing savings. So Quilt 20 for 20% 20 off a $50 purchase. Quilt 25 for 25% 25 off a $50 to almost $100 purchase. And 30% off a $100 purchase with Quilt 30. All right, so great, great deals for National Quilting Month. And I have all kinds of quilty projects going on throughout this month on the Sulky blog um, and here on So What. But today we're actually going to take a little bit of a departure from the quilty projects because I have the most adorable pattern for you uh, to kind of get into the spirit of Easter, of springtime. You know, Easter is a little bit early this year, so we have to be thinking about it a little bit early. And um, I think you're going to enjoy today's project. It's a very, very cute bunny-shaped treat holder. So I will get to that momentarily. But while we are on the subject of quilting, let me know in the comments, in the live chat, if you are working on a quilty project, if you are interested in diving into quilting, do you consider yourself a quilter? Or are you an embroiderer? Do you just say, I'm a seamstress or a sewist? How do you sort of define, you know, yourself as a crafter? I know a lot of people say they are omni-crafters or they're just a crafter because they dabble in so many different things, knitting, sewing, what have you. Um, but I do feel like, you know, a lot of sewers out there that make quilts really prefer to call themselves quilters. So I'm just kind of curious because I get different answers all of the time. So do you consider yourself a quilter or something else? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> and if you don't, if you've never tried a quilt, what is the reason? Um, I'm just curious. All right. So I grew up never really making quilts. I don't know why. My, my grandmother was the seamstress in her town in South Dakota. Um, and, you know, uh, I guess I just always grew up around people who are making clothes, you know, making prom dresses and Halloween costumes and mending things a lot. Um, so that's really the sewing I grew up with. And it wasn't until later in my sewing career that I started kind of dabbling in quilty projects. I started with, you know, table runners, smaller things like placemats, practicing quilting, um, you know, understanding kind of how my machine behaved with all the layers, um, all the, you know, intersecting seam lines and things. Then I got into foundation paper piecing. Super fun. Um, so now I guess I'm just a, a sewist of all kinds. I do it all. Um, and, you know, I'm always trying to challenge myself to learn something new. So let's see. Bonnie says, a few quilts in progress, multitasker, knit, crochet, sew, and quilt. Bonnie does it all. Um, <laughs> busy doing other time-consuming things. Um, Yvonne says, I'm not a quilter, or I am a quilter, but I use my embroidery machine on many of my blocks. Mostly I make unique rope bowls using strips of fabric these days. Love that. Love a good rope bowl. <laughs> Leslie says, or sewer, always have to add, no, I won't do your mending. I know. No boring, right? I got to tell you, I always have a stack of clothes by my door here in my sewing studio 
um, whether it's my husband's pants that need a button or one of my kids' pants that has a hole in it, something always needs to be fixed. And, you know, I'm so resentful for it, but I am glad that I know how to sew so I can fix these things. They don't end up, you know, in the trash, God forbid, things like that. All right. So I guess I'm asking because it's National Quilting Month and we're doing lots of quilty projects, as I mentioned. And we also have our free motion for beginners quilting session about to hit sewingonline.sulky.com on March 12th. That is next Tuesday. This session will be available for viewing. So on March 12th, if you are registered for free motion for beginners, you will get an email saying that the session is now ready for viewing. That means you can go in at any time. It does not have to be next Tuesday at all. That's just the day everything sort of launches on the site um, and is ready. So you will get an email saying, go ahead and log in whenever you like and view all of the videos, grab all the patterns, get all the quilting templates, and you can choose how you want to participate with the course. You can start from the very beginning and work your way all throughout until it's over. You can review any of those videos or any of the lessons at any time. You can grab up as many quilting templates as you want. There's, I believe, five quilting templates that come with the course and a full quilt pattern as well. Um, so if you happen to, you know, be working on a quilty project a couple of years from now and you're like, oh, wait, I want that circle and bubble template from my Sulky course, you can go back in into your library at sewingonline.sulky.com grab up that quilting template, print it off as many times as you wish, transfer it to your quilt top, and sew through all of the layers. So during this free motion for beginners session, you are going to learn the very basics of free motion quilting, and then you're going to build on those skills and get a little bit more advanced as you move forward, as you gain confidence, as you watch more of the videos. It's an excellent, excellent course taught by Eric Drexler, who is a national educator for Sulky, and he really, really is the master of free motion. He has been teaching free motion quilting for as long as I can remember, and he really, really is an authority on the subject. So you will be in good hands with Eric Drexler throughout the course. It is not a live event, again. These are all videos that are here for you to watch, rewind, fast forward, rewatch as many times as you want. So Eric will be right there with you at the sewing machine, guiding you every step of the way. There's also a Q&A uh, comment section at the bottom of each lesson page as you work your way through the session. So if you have a question ab about a particular video, a particular technique, you can write your question right there on that lesson page, and then we will all respond to you as quickly as possible. You might hear from me, you might hear from Eric directly, or you might hear from the Sulky support staff. So we are all in this together, and we want you to have success at your sewing machine when you drop those feed dogs. Um, I, I know that it took me a long time to really trust myself to quilt my own quilts, quilt my own table runners, even quilt a little coaster. I don't know what it is. It's so intimidating once you have full control over moving that fabric under the presser foot. But Eric really, really makes it seem like you can do this. And you know what? You really can. I mean, if I can learn how to do it from Eric, so can you. And I have been quilting my own projects, whether it's free motion or end-to-end um, -end quilting designs in my embroidery machine um, for a long, long time. There are certain circumstances where I will still send a quilt to a long armor, and that's really when I'm short on time or the quilt is particularly large. If it is, you know, 108 inches square, um, I will probably send that off to a long armor, um, seriously, for time's sake. But in those instances, I always bring my own thread to the long armor. 
I say use this on top, use this on the bottom because I want it to look the way I want it to look and I want to make sure that they are using high quality, great looking thread. And a lot of the times I'll bring a 30 weight cotton blendables thread. They've never seen it before. They are so excited to use it. Um, and I've converted a couple of long armors to the 30 weight cotton blendables uh, for quilting, I will say. It's just so far superior um, than your traditional variegated thread. Variegated thread is dyed very methodically, so you have very distinct repeating patterns of color across the length of the thread. Whereas the blendables thread from Sulky, literally the colors blend into each other almost like a watercolor effect because the thread is randomly dyed every two and a half to five inches across the thread length. So you get these beautiful sort of watercolory, uh, you know, threads across your quilt top that don't have this distinct repeating pattern um, that can, you know, kind of throw your eye off when you're looking at the quilt. All right. So Linda says, who will be teaching? Will it be you? All right. So Eric Drexler is teaching all of the free motion lessons for free motion for beginners. And then I come on in the end with a special lesson to create a free, uh, excuse me, a simple sampler quilt. It's actually hanging behind me. You can see the scale of it. It's a small size quilt and simple piecing pattern so that you can really have fun with the quilting that you want to do that you've learned throughout the free motion uh, lessons. So I think there's four or five different free motion. Um, actually, there's five quilting templates. So there's five free motion quilting lessons. Each one of those goes with a different template. So you will learn meandering, stippling, bubbles and circles. Um, even in this quilt, I show you how to outline motifs, free motion style. So all of these flower petals, let me show you this again so you can see it a little closer up. All of the flower petals are actually free motion quilted using sulky hollow shimmer thread. That's our flat holographic thread. And I give you a full tutorial on how to set up your machine for this thread, how to do free motion with this, what to use in the bobbin, what size needle to use, how to position your hands, how to position the thread on the spool pin for success. So it's hard to see in this photo, but every single one of these flowers is outlined a couple of times with hollow shimmer. So it has this really, really pretty metallic sparkly effect to it when you look at it a little bit closer. And then the solid fabrics have the meandering with a very heavyweight 12 weight cotton blendables thread. And then there's also invisible thread involved. There's so many different thread types and weights that come with the kit for this session. You can see there's six thread spools that come with this kit. You get poly light thread, which is a 60 weight thread, an invisible thread. You get a 50 weight cotton thread, which we're gonna use for the piecing of the quilt top and for the binding. You can also use it for uh, bobbin thread and for quilting in certain circumstances, depending on your desired look. You also get a 12 weight thread, a 30 weight thread, and have I mentioned them all? Ooh, and the hollow shimmer. So all six thread varieties that we talk about during the session, you get to play around with, and they all come in these colors that match the fabrics perfectly. They really coordinate nicely with the fabric print, which is a uh, Anna Maria Horner fabric print by Free Spirit Fabrics. And then the solids match perfectly with that print. Those are Tula Pink solids, also by Free Spirit Fabrics. Also, you can't really see hanging behind me because my chair is covering it up, but I've added a decorative macrame edging to the bottom of the quilt. Since it's such a small quilt, I thought it worked best as a wall hanging. So that additional macrame edge with the little beads adds a little something special to it. 
And there's a whole video lesson on how to do that technique. You'll also get three packs of needles that correspond with the thread types and weights that we're using throughout the session, as well as this uh, special pack of sticky Fabrisolvi. You get four or five sheets, I can't remember, of sticky Fabrisolvi in the kit, and that is so that you can use it as a transfer method for your favorite quilt uh, template. Um, it also comes with the batting that you will use to create your sampler quilt. So everything that you need is in this handy little kit at sulky.com. All right, so grab up your kit, sulky.com, register for free motion for beginners. There you can see the macrame edging with the little beads um, along the lower edge of the sampler quilt, but you could also omit that effect and you could use this as a nice little table topper or something like this. You could add your macrame to each corner and have it be a really pretty table topper of sorts. So there's lots and lots of ways to customize this. Um, also, the sampler quilt is really made of a series of half square triangles. And again, there's a full video on how to create those and how to assemble the quilt top. Um, in addition to all of your quilting videos. So I really hope that you all will register for free motion for beginners. In one week, this will all be ready for viewing, for commenting, for grabbing up the patterns, and participating in this awesome virtual event. So let me know if you have any questions about it. Um, it is a really pretty springy wall hanging um, in these great, you know, floral uh, prints and whatnot. Um, let's see if we have any questions about the course. Anita says, I've learned to do a touch of free motion. It's a struggle with bigger or heavier items, but super fun for smaller items. Yes. And it's nice that this is a small sampler quilt because you can really, you know, try a lot of different quilting um, styles and templates. Um, you know, you can do the big meandering stitches on the solid fabrics like I did, or you could do smaller bubbles and circles. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can interpret your sampler quilt. That's why it's a sampler quilt, so that you can have fun and get a lot of practice in, but then you still have something to show for it. So throughout the free motion quilting lessons, you will create some practice quilt sandwiches and you'll practice, practice, practice on those. Then you get to your sampler quilt and you get to plan out your quilting and do something a little bit more um, intentional with your design. Um, but it's still a sampler quilt, so put as much or as little quilting on it as you want, and then you have something you can be proud of that you completed that's a nice small size. Then you can move on to a bigger quilt or a table runner, something like this, as you gain more and more confidence. All right, does the session fee go towards the sale price threshold? Um, are you talking about using the coupons for today? Uh, so the coupon is good for our physical products at sulky.com. So the session is actually purchased over on our education site which is sewingonline.sulky.com. However, hmm, it does say excludes sale items and clearance items. And I will say that the kit for the session is on sale. So that coupon would not apply to the kit because the kit is already like $20 off retail or something like this. So we put the kit on sale for a special, special deal. Um, up until our session goes live. So you've got one week to take advantage of the sale price for the Free Motion Simple Sampler Quilt Kit. So I hope that answered your question. Thanks for asking it. All right. Okay, so shall we get to today's project? Um, every time I talk about a holiday, I think to myself, how is this holiday coming on so soon? I mean, how is it that we are talking about Easter today or, you know, spring bunnies 
um, that type of thing. It feels like we just had Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, and also, I mean, let's not forget St. Patrick's Day is coming up too, which is a really fun holiday to sew for as well. But let's jump forward um, for some felty bunnies. So who out there has tried sulky felty? If you are a regular So What watcher, you know that I talk about felty all the time. I absolutely love working with it. It is a polyester needle felt, and it has the hand, the texture, the feel of wool felt, but it's polyester. So you can use fusibles with it. You can use water-soluble stabilizers with it. You can wash it and dry it. It is so forgiving. It is great for sewing projects because it's manufactured to accept a lot of needle penetrations and accept a lot of thread. So if you're using it for machine embroidery, you can do a very heavy satin stitch design and not have any buckling or puckering around the stitches. It just kind of melts into the felty fibers. It's so amazing to work with. It's really unlike anything I've seen out there. It's very different from the felt sheets that you find in your craft store, you know, that are 19 cents a piece or what have you. Some of those are either super, super thick and stiff, so not suitable for, you know, our soft sewing projects. Some of them are too soft and flimsy. You can almost see through them. So if you were to use them for an applique, you could probably see the fabric underneath. So Sulky Felty is much superior to that. It comes in assortment packs. We have a rainbow assortment, a holiday assortment, a natural assortment, um, actually neutral, sorry, neutral assortment, and a heathered assortment. It also comes on the roll in all of the available colors. So if you are grabbing it up today to create our Felty Bunnies project, you will want to grab a roll of the white Felty. And I knew I had it next to me here because you're gonna to wanna to create a lot of these. They come together really quickly. It's a great project to involve the kiddos. If you are gonna have some kiddos come around over spring break, this is a great project to keep their little hands busy, give them a little sewing uh, lesson on top of it. They may, might not even know that they are, you know, um, getting schooled. <laughs> They're just having fun creating. Um, all you need is a couple of spools of sulky cotton petites thread. We are going to do these by hand, but you could certainly also do them by machine as well. If you are going to use that thread in your sewing machine, you want to use a size 116 needle. That way the needle eye is big enough to accommodate that 12 weight thread and you'll still get really great coverage. You'll be able to see the thread really distinctly. Um, but the 116 needle is what you need if you want to do this by machine. But I'm going to show you how it's done by hand. So the cutest thing ever, I know, this is an old, old project from the 80s that my mom just, you know, found in the vault. And it's one of these, oh man, it's like a, a yarn cross stitch kind of project that you used with the plastic, um, the plastic sheeting. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I haven't done it in so long that I have, you know, forgotten really what it's called. But at any rate, um, I know a lot of you are going to want to make the basket, but the basket is just the vessel to hold our cute felty bunnies. All right, so we've got a small size bunny and a large size bunny, and they hold a cute little treat, and they look like a peep. So cute. The small size holds a little bit of candy. The large size will fit a plastic Easter egg. So you can make as many as you like and put these in a cute little Easter basket. Um, it makes a really cute centerpiece. And also, if you create the small bunnies, 
you can use them as little napkin rings for your spring table. You just will tie your ribbon around the napkin and have them at each place setting. How cute. You could also create the larger size bunny and wrap a silverware setting inside and then close it up with the ribbon. Very, very cute as well. All right, so first off, this project hit the Sulky blog this morning, blog.sulky.com. And that's where you're going to go to find the pattern for the bunnies, the small and large size. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Oh, here, here's what I just showed you. And then here's our little guy. That's the small size. Here is so you can see the difference between the small and large size. All right. So uh, let's see. Along with the felty, you also need a little bit of batting. These have um, just low loft batting in between two felty layers. Just gives it a little bit of loft, a little bit of substance um, so that, you know, it can retain its shape, really. Uh, let's see. You will need that batting, perhaps some KK2000 temporary spray adhesive to secure your batting between those layers. Not super necessary, but I find it helpful because then the batting doesn't shift, um, especially if you want to sew these by machine um, or if you're sewing with some littles and you want to make sure that the batting doesn't slip while they're doing the hand sewing. You need a hand sewing needle, of course. Um, and if you're looking for some hand embroidery stitches or a hand embroidery primer that you want to print out, let's say you are having you know, some littles over, or even some friends. Hey, they don't have to be little people. Um, you can print this out, and it's a clickable link on the blog uh, for our hand embroidery stitch guide. It has some little illustrations that take you through some basic hand uh, embroidery stitches from back stitches, running stitches, French knots, um, long and short stitches. I can't think of them all, but it's a really great resource. And it is also uh, within that blog post as well. So you can grab up the pattern and the hand embroidery stitch guide. Um, now for this, we are really just hand embroidering the facial features, some little French knots. And then around the outer edge, you can do a blanket stitch or even a whip stitch. These are blanket stitched so that there's a little bit of thread along the edge, kind of concealing, you know, making sure those layers stay together. If you're going to set up your sewing machine for this though, you can really just straight stitch inside the bunny edge. And you could even set up your machine for a blanket stitch as well and just do it by machine. So before you sew those together though, you wanna add your facial features to your bunny. Um, let's see, so make sure you are putting your comments, questions, all of those good things in the comments in the live chat because our giveaway today for one lucky viewer who is watching and commenting and giving me those great emojis and interacting with me today, that's all you have to do to be automatically eligible to win our spring sampler thread pack. This is our 12 weight cotton petites spring sampler. This has all the great colors that are great for spring, for Easter, for, you know, all your pastels. So there's like an off-white, yellow, green, blue, bluish, purplish, pink, uh, dark pink, and a light pink. So for these little bunnies, we just chose the dark pink color that you see here for the facial features, which are really just eyes and nose. And then that off-white color or, you know, bright white would also work for the white felty for the blanket stitches. All right, so this is valued at about $12 on the Sulky website, so you could be the winner simply by commenting here today. You also need to be sure to like our Facebook page if you're watching there or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching there. Otherwise, I won't be able to contact you to gift you today's gift. All right. So here is what the pattern looks like when you grab it at 
sulky.com. And you might be thinking, huh, this looks like a really familiar image. So I got the idea for this off of a cookie. Okay. I, <laughs> I was watching some video on social media and this person took a gingerbread cookie cutter, gingerbread man. Yep. You got it. Cut out the cookies, turned them around. And then before baking them, folded in the gingerbread hands around a little ball of foil, then baked the cookie and decorated it like an Easter bunny. Then they slipped in a little candy or chocolate after the cookies were done baking so that the bunny was holding on to a treat. So I thought, we're going to make this out of felty. <laughs> so that is why your pattern template looks like a gingerbread man upside down because that was the inspiration for this project. So that's what we started with here. So when you print out uh, your pattern, you'll have either the large or the small bunny that you can cut out. There are no facial features plotted on the template, the two eyes and nose, right? If you want your bunnies to look like peeps, like we made here, you will simply add two eyes and a nose right underneath where the ears are. And then you have a peep looking bunny. But you could certainly do whatever facial features you want. You could even add some whiskers to your bunny. You could add some inner ear ovals. You can decorate it however you would like. You can even add a little tummy circle if you want out of stitches. So you can take your Spring Petites sampler and use all the colors or just use two like we did for the samples. So this is another fun thing for the kiddos to do if they want to draw their little bunny face onto their particular template. You can give them each a template to start with so that they can kind of figure out how they want to decorate their bunny or how they want to embroider it ultimately. So this is kind of you know, a working template to use as your pattern piece, but also to experiment with how you want to embroider it later. So print that out, cut out your bunnies, plot your embroidery stitches, facial features, ears, what have you. And then we're going to cut out two from the white felty and one from the batting. And then you'll want to transfer those facial features that you plotted onto just one of the felty sheets, and that will become your bunny front. All right. Then you will do your hand embroidery following those facial feature lines. So you can, again, choose whichever hand embroidery stitches you prefer. If you do want to do this on your machine and you're just using two dots for the eyes, and a little bit smaller dot for the nose, you might even have a circle decorative stitch on your sewing machine that you can experiment with and use for this part. Um, you know, you might even find a different decorative stitch that you want to use. Or maybe you don't even want a face on your bunny. You just want to, you know, put decorative stitches all over it. The choice is yours. All right. So once you finish up your hand embroidery, and here's the thing, even for people who don't like to do handwork, you could do three French knots, be done with it, and then sew up your bunny on the machine. And how fast could you whip these out to create a really special Easter basket or a really special Easter centerpiece or spring centerpiece? So yes, small stars would be really cute, Denise, as well for the eyes, especially really, really cute. All right, so once all of your hand embroidery is complete, you'll want to make sure to weave any thread tails that you started and ended with along the stitches on the back side. If you're doing French knots, you can just knot on the back side as well, just to make sure that those are nice and secure. And then it's really just a matter of trimming up our batting. You could see this is still in the gingerbread shape, so it's a little bit confusing. If I were to rotate this, do, 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 now we have our bunny. 
I just had to share with you the inspiration. It's kind of obvious now that I've told you. Um, so with your batting bunny, you need to trim away about a quarter of an inch from the outside edges. So just use, you know, your fabric marking pen and mark about a quarter of an inch away and trim it up. That is because we don't want our batting to really show between our felty layers along the outer edge of the bunny. Now, if your batting is pure white, it may not matter to even trim it up. You'll just have a little bit of extra, you know, a third layer um, of white fluff inside of your seam allowance or the outer edge of your bunny. But just to avoid that, we went ahead and trimmed away a quarter of an inch from just the batting piece. Then we can insert the batting by placing our back bunny wrong side up on our work surface. You can spray it with a little KK2000, then center your batting bunny over the top of that, spray it with a little KK2000, and then place your embroidered bunny right side up over all of those layers. And if you've sprayed it, you won't really need any clips or pins, but if you haven't, you might want just a couple of pins so that nothing shifts while you're sewing. Then you will want to do your blanket stitching or whichever decorative stitch you prefer to do, a whip stitch, a zigzag stitch, even, you know, I don't know if you would want to do some different French knots all the way around so it almost looks like dollops of frosting in the spirit of the cookie uh, inspiration. I don't know. Get creative. Have fun with it. It's so super easy. You could really make one one way. Try something else for the next three that you create. So have fun with it. Stitch it up however you like. Take it to your sewing machine with that size 116 needle. Thread it with the 12 weight thread in the top. And I would really suggest using a lighter weight thread in the bobbin if you are going to sew that heavyweight thread. Um, a 50 weight, 40 weight, you could even use a 60 weight thread in the bobbin um, just to make sure you have a nice balanced stitch when you are working with it. I would also lengthen the stitch a little bit, 3.0 to 3.5 uh, when you're working with that heavier thread. Um, and you should have great success with it if you want to just stitch a quarter of an inch from the perimeter all the way around your bunny. Leave long thread tails and then pull them to the wrong side and tie them off. Um, and honestly, that's all you need to do. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot our ribbon ties. I knew I was forgetting something. Before you do your blanket stitching, you need to add the ribbons to your bunny. So when we are at this stage, before you add your felty to the top, you need to place your ribbons where the hands are, where the hands are coming out. So I started with two six inch pieces of ribbon for each side. And then after we tie it in a bow, you can kind of trim up the ribbon. It gets to be a little bit um, too much. But that way, it's better to start out with too much than not enough ribbon. So when you go, let's say you have a particularly large plastic egg that you want your bunny to hold, that way you have enough ribbon if the, the arms aren't meeting, you know, exactly where you want them to be. So two six inch ribbons at each hand, and you can just use a wonder clip or pin those in place in between the batting layer and your front felty piece. So glad I remembered that. So once you do that, if you are doing the hand blanket stitches, you really want to secure the ribbons with the stitches on both of the hands before you do the whole perimeter stitching. Okay, glad we remembered that. <laughs> that way your ribbon is nice and secure. Then you can add your decorative stitching all around the bunny and the ribbons aren't gonna go anywhere. Um, so if you are working with littles who kind of, they've never done a blanket stitch before, um, you might want to just kind of whip stitch the ribbons in place before they get to that point, just so they won't move. They're nice and secure. If they get tugged on a little bit too much during the sewing process, or even as they're being used, you can be sure that those are, you know, in place. 
Um, Sue says maybe use a glue stick to hold the ribbons so they're easier to stitch. Great idea. You could also, little shot of KK2000, and uh, in between those layers will also help as well. All right, two on each side or one per hand. Two ribbons on each side, and then they come together, and you'll tie a bow um, to hold your candy or your plastic Easter egg or treat or napkin ring or whatever you're using it for. All right, and so then you have your cute little guy. You could see um, the small one doesn't really hold that a small plastic Easter egg, you know, with the hands touching, but with that extra ribbon, it allows you, you know, to still secure something like a plastic Easter egg. I think it's just the most adorable thing. And then, of course, you'll make tons and tons of these because they come together so quickly. And with a roll of felty, you can get lots of small and large felty Easter or felty bunny treat holders. Yes. All right. So I think uh, small projects for springy Easter time, for little gifties, for having a craft night with, you know, the little ones or even just some friends. Um, very cute as a cute little, uh, I almost said door prize because I've got door prize on the brain. Um, uh, a little gift for people coming to your house for a dinner party um, or Easter, you know, brunch or something like this. Everybody can have their own little bunny. You can even personalize it on the tummy with the person's name, and then it's a little place card that you place at each table setting. That would be adorable. Um, so anyways, all different ways you can look at it. I was even thinking you could make them even smaller, maybe um, reduce the size before you print it. You could make it even smaller, and it could be a little like pencil topper, something like that for the classrooms. Um, so lots of different ways. I'm sure you could put your creative spin on it, um, and take it to the next level, but this is the basic, uh, you know, bunny treat holder, and maybe you will even be inspired to make the cookies as well and see how those come out. But sometimes it's easier for me to make things out of fabric than it is out of dough. <laughs> All right, let's see if we have any questions that have come in. Um, ooh, yes, Betsy, thank you for saying that. You could glue a white pom-pom on the back for a tail, and it might help the bunny stand up. I'm so glad you said that because actually in the blog post, I suggested adding a little bunny tail with some thread loops, but gluing on a pom-pom is easy enough for me. That sounds a, like a really, really cute idea. Um, so thank you for saying that. Oh, Janine had the same idea. Put a little bunny tail on the back so it'll sit up and the bunny will have its tail. Yes, very, very. Um, picture looks like there was only one ribbon per side, not two. Um, yeah, there's two ribbons on each side. It is hard to see, but they do come together and are tied in a bow. Um, so two on each side, one on each hand so that you can tie it around and it'll stay shut. Um, Caroline says, these would make a great garland with a small styrofoam Easter egg in their arms. Great idea. I knew as we came together, <laughs> we would take it to the next level and come up with something equally as cute to make with this cute little pattern. Very good. Um, oh, Barb has a great idea about the ribbons as well. You could use one ribbon all the way through, stitched in place, but then you can't pull it off. It wastes a bit, but maybe more secure. Great idea. So instead of sewing the ribbon ends at each arm, you would sew it across. Um, I would just suggest, um, you know, get a very thin ribbon if you're doing that, because in the pattern, we don't really specify a ribbon width. It's kind of like dive into your stash if you've got some ribbons. Um, and get, you know, decorative with it. But that's a great idea as well. Thank you so much for that. All right. And yes, the ribbons are important. Pretty colors and a cute project to do with the grandkids. 
Absolutely. Um, and yep, you could trim down the ears a bit to make them not so long if you would like as well. And you can also, you know, shape the tummy a little bit differently if you want. Um, let me go back to what the pattern looks like. So as I mentioned, we started with a gingerbread man outline and just flipped it on its head. So now we've got the ears and the arms and the belly of the bunny. But if you don't want the belly to kind of come in, you could certainly round it up so that it's more in line with the ears. Then you might have a little bit better shape to work with if you're using it for, let's say, a napkin holder um, or something like that. Or if you wanted to use it as a garland and you want a little bit more belly to work with, maybe you're going to do a belly applique or belly embroidery stitches, then you might want to just elongate the line coming down from the ears, match it up with the round part of the bottom, and then you don't have sort of that circular head shape that we get from the gingerbread man outline. Um, but I wanted to keep that intact since this really was a play on that cookie design. I thought, let's just, you know, not even bother, make it look like a gingerbread man on his head, and we'll all get some great ideas for using the pattern in different ways. All right. And yes, you can curve the ears to be floppy if you feel creative. Um, I have even heard, not with this particular project since this is the first time we are debuting it, but perhaps you could even put some wire in the ears and then when you do your blanket stitch, you blanket stitch around the wire edge as well. And the wire edge is in between those layers around the batting so that when you're done, you can shape the ears and bend the wires and then your Easter bunny or your spring bunny um, is a little bit flexible. So that might be a fun thing to do as well. All right. And then Patsy says, I'll flip these over and use the little people for May baskets. There you go. See? So many great ideas and ways to use this pattern in different you know, for different applications, different holidays, different things. I love it. We are so resourceful as sewers. Um, and Patsy, the felty is not on special in particular, but we do have this great coupon um, deal that you can make sure to mark down these coupons because you can save 20% off if you spend up to $50, 25% off from $50 to $100, and 30% off a $100 and more purchase at sulky.com. This ends at midnight tonight, so be sure to mark down these coupon codes and, you know, use that quilt 20 if you're grabbing up some felty today and get 20% off. Kelly has another great idea. You could insert pipe cleaners through the arms and back between the layers to help hold the treats. You guys are so creative. I'm so glad we come together for <laughs> to just, you know, share our ideas and make this even better than it was when we started. All right. Um, again, be sure you're putting your questions and comments in the chat because our giveaway today to one lucky viewer who is watching and commenting and doing all of those great things will win our Cotton Petites Spring Sampler Assortment valued at $12. Six spools of Sulky Cotton Petites thread. If you're not familiar with this thread, it really is the thread that we recommend for handwork, as well as big stitch quilting and things of this nature. But, I mean, I also used it for free motion quilting in the sample behind me for our free motion uh, for beginners simple sampler quilt kit but I digress. So one strand of the 12 weight cotton petites thread is equal to two strands of traditional embroidery floss. So if you are normally using embroidery floss for handwork projects, cross stitch, etc., you will love working with this because you get great coverage with just one strand and it comes on a spool. So you don't have to mess with all of those skeins and separate all of the threads and they inevitably knot on you and then you end up just cutting away the knot because you can never get it out and wasting a bunch of it. 
Plus, this is a 50 yard spool, so not only can you use it for handwork, but then you can put it on your machine with that size 100 needle and also sew with it. So dual duty, great coverage, 100% cotton, fantastic. Comes in solid colors that you see here and also in the full blendables line, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Susan says, when does the free motion class start? Um, it actually will be activated next Tuesday, March 12th. You will get an email. If you are registered, you'll get an email saying the session is now ready for viewing. That means all the videos are there to watch. All the patterns are ready to download. All the quilting templates are there for you. All of the lessons are available for viewing and interacting with. So next Tuesday on the 12th, you will get that email. If you haven't purchased up your quilt kit yet for the sampler quilt, which also includes some extra fabric for, you know, things like practicing your quilting. I was looking for my um, funny little practice quilt here. Um, and all of those threads and all of those needles and all the macrame stuff, you can still grab that at the special kit deal, which is like 20 bucks off retail, something like that. It's a really, really great price for this quilt kit. I think you will find if you were to buy the fabric alone, it would cost what this kit costs. So it's a great, great deal. Um, but yeah, here's one of my samplers that I made so that I could see what all the threads would look like on the fabrics that I was using. I could audition the thread types, weights, and colors all on my sample square. So here you might be able to see a little bit better, let me get rid of this, the hollow shimmer that I was talking about. See how pretty and metallic -y it is? And first I tried just outlining all the petals. And then in this one, I went in and gave the petals um, even more of the hollow shimmer thread. And that's all done by dropping the feed dogs and just following the lines of the fabric motif. And it's so pretty and metallic and such a great accent for the sampler quilt. And then, yes, I quilted all over it using all the different threads in the kit. I used the 50 weight cotton thread, the 30 weight thread, the 60 weight poly light. I used the 12 weight cotton petites, the 30 weight cotton. I also tried the hollow shimmer in some bubbles and some meandering just to see what I was going to want on my finished quilt sample. So grab up your kit, make sure you're ready for that on Tuesday. As I mentioned before, it's not a live event, so you don't need to be there on Tuesday right when everything is ready. That's just when it's available for you. It's a totally self-guided quilting session, so you are in charge of how you want to consume the information, how many videos you want to watch per day. Um, if you want to do the whole thing in one fell swoop, by all means, feel free or you can break up your uh, quilting time and your learning time um, you know, into different sections. So it is presented in different lessons so that there are natural stopping points. So that let's say you only have 20 minutes that day um, and you wanna get started, but you have other things going on. Well, you can do lesson one and then you can return when it's convenient for you and continue where you left off. That's the cool thing about this particular platform with Sulky is it will remember where you left off as long as you click complete lesson. So after you complete lesson one, you will hit complete lesson and then you can log out and next week come back and it will remember where you were. So that's great for me because I always forget and <laughs> I am a forgetful person sometimes. There's a lot going on up here. I also wanted to mention while you are looking at that uh, simple sampler quilt kit at sulky.com and while there are special deals and a great coupon to be had, you might want to look at these free motion quilting gloves as well. If you're going to dive into this world of free motion and you know you're going to be wanting to do it more and more, or even if you just like to do straight line quilting um, or a lot of embroidery. These also really help 
with, if you're doing a lot of different hoopings, let's say you're embroidering the same project for 20 of your friends for Christmas, let's say. Well, you can really get hand fatigue with all of the hooping and unhooping and all of the things that we're doing with our hands at the sewing machine. These ergonomic gloves are really awesome for a lot of different applications. They are adjustable with this Velcro, but they do come in different sizes based on your hand size. But you can adjust this for your wrist width a little bit. One side is kind of mesh, right? So really breathable and nice. The other side has all of these little padded pockets right where you really need them the most when you're at your machine doing free motion or quilting of any kind or dealing with those hoops. It just helps reduce your hand fatigue for a lot of sewing applications. You can also see there are some fingertips that are suitable for touching your screen. So you don't have to remove these when you're changing your, you know, stitch length and width or stitch type or what have you. You can still navigate your machine screen just fine because of these fingertips. I, uh, when I was doing the free motion videos for the sampler quilt, I did some of the videos without using these. And then I did some of the videos putting these on. And I will tell you, it made a huge difference. I was like, why haven't I been wearing these the whole time? But I just kind of wanted to show you that you don't necessarily need to have these. You can use your hands and, you know, Eric really goes through how to position your hands, how your posture should be for, you know, the optimum experience at the sewing machine. Um, there's a whole lesson on how to set everything up. Um, but I just found these were just, I was so thankful for them, let's say. So we have these at sulky.com. While we're having this crazy sale, put these in your cart if you experience any of those things. I have arthritic thumbs. A lot of sewing, you know, applications or techniques bother my thumbs. These, it's just really nice and supportive for them. So I really find it helps me out with a lot of sewing that I do, especially free motion quilting or free motion embroidery. So check those out. There's different sizes of them, small, medium, large, and I think even extra large um, at sulky.com. So you can add those to your cart with your simple sampler quilt kit. And then you can be, you know, waiting for Tuesday to get all of your session lessons, patterns, quilt templates, and all of those good things. All right, Susan says, would you do a lap quilt size free motion or do you recommend a long arm? Um, I think a lap quilt is definitely manageable uh, for free motion quilting. Now, the thing, your, your limitations are really going to be how much room you have right here for any of your quilt to hang out if you choose to turn it this way. Now, you certainly can adjust your quilt so that you're always quilting with the bulk of your quilt to the left of the machine arm. That way, you are not limited by how much you can roll your quilt along this side. Um, but people can quilt king size and bigger free motion style on their machines. It's just really a matter of your comfort level um, and your experience. You want to start in the middle of your quilt, so you are going to have to roll up one of the, at least one of the sides of the quilt, if not both, um, to really just maneuver it um, in that available space on your machine. So you might be limited to your size of machine when you're thinking about free motion quilting larger quilts like that. So that's the only thing I think that would, um, you know, necessitate a long arm machine. Um, but certainly if you have a friend that has a long arm machine, take it on over there. You could still free motion quilt using a long arm. Um, you don't have to use a computerized program that's built into the machine. So, all right. Oh, Deborah says, I wear my quilting gloves when piecing and also when adding the binding. Yeah, especially if you do the binding by hand. Um, I know 
I talk a lot about hand sewing and people give me a lot of flack for it because they just don't like to hand sew. <laughs> but I always finish my binding by hand. Um, anything that kind of, you know, gives you a little bit of ache in your fingers or wrists, um, I would think would be great with those quilting gloves. Colleen says, hi, Colleen. Used my gloves with straight line quilting yesterday. Just made it easier. Yes. Free motion quilting gloves are a total game changer. Absolutely. All right. And Debbie is liking the shimmer thread. Yes, holler shimmer looks fantastic. I think you will really, really have fun experimenting with these different thread types and weights and how your machine handles them, how to set up your machine. Um, it's really just presented in a very thoughtful way so that you can gain a lot of knowledge about these threads. And then in your future projects, you'll know which one you want to jump to for different special effects, um, things like that. All right. Uh, Linda says, my local quilt shop rents the use of a long arm. That is really cool. How fun is that? And Kelly says, if you have the patience, you can do almost any size quilt on a standard machine. That is true. All right. Thanks, everybody, for all of your comments, all of your expertise, all of your great ideas for turning today's project into something new and putting your spin on it. That's really what it's all about here and one of the reasons why we come together on So What every week. So I thank you so much for joining me today. Grab up your pattern from the Sulky blog and make yourself a lot of felty bunnies. Grab up your felty. Make sure you are registered for free motion quilting for beginners. Even if you're not a beginner and you've tried free motion before, I am sure you will learn something new during this quilting session and really just gain confidence at the machine and have an instructor right there with you that you can ask questions to right on those pages. It's really, really a great way to learn very invaluable information for quilting for any skill level, uh, free motion style. So I think you will all really enjoy. I can't wait to hear what you think next Tuesday when we come together on So What for all of you who are chomping at the bit to log in Tuesday morning and start watching those videos. We will chit chat next Tuesday and I'll hear how it's going along. And of course, you could still sign up after next Tuesday as well because all of our sessions are always offered on demand as self-guided virtual events that you get to choose the way that you want to learn. All right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone, and join me next Tuesday for another So What, where we will talk about more quilty things, and we will check in on all of our friends who are in our Free Motion for Beginners quilting session. I hope it is one of you. Have a great rest of your day, everyone, and I'll see you next Tuesday.